the name that the Lord has prayed and we will rejoice. I said, praise the Lord with everybody. I'm going to put this up in my hands together and thank God. Thank you for his kindness, his grace, his long suffering. Hallelujah.
me back, but if I did not call your name and you are here and you pastor a local church, I want you to stand, amen, so that we can acknowledge you. Amen. Yeah. That's it. Hallelujah. Yes. I am so grateful for these women of God who serve as pastors. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Let's clap. Bible says that there is neither male nor female. Amen. There is neither male nor female in the spirit. And we are grateful that the spirit of the Lord is falling both on man and woman in this season. Hallelujah. Amen. And I, I must say this, that everything significant, uh, pretty much everything significant that has happened in my spiritual walk with the Lord, a woman has been involved. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we salute all of the women and men of God who serve. All right, I'm going to ask a man, uh, Pastor Dexter Utley, if he would come. He's going to give us congratulations from a local pastor. He's a senior pastor of the Impact. Hallelujah. He's a senior pastor of the Impact Kingdom Center. Come on, let's clap our hands. Let's clap our hands. Yes, 
yes. that exists, yes. we can rule out a person. Because it means to be accompanied by another person or thing. Since this office is lonely, we can rule out person. And let's just roll with thing. Truth be told, there will be some days and times and moments when as a pastor you will have no idea where God is. Yeah. Psalms 22, the writer says, My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Yes. In Jeremiah chapter 20, he says, O oh Lord, mm -hmm. thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived, and I am in derision mm -hmm. daily, and everyone mocked me. My God. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, Jesus says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Forsaken me? Yeah. If you would, Pastor, would you stand up? Is this okay? Go and see. <laughs> So for me to stand as a local pastor, for me to stand as a bishop designate, for me to stand in this particular office and offer you congratulations to this very office is for me to stand and give you instructions to the end that when you have a Psalms 22 moment, All right. mm. when you feel or in the midst of a Jeremiah chapter 20 moment, mm. or when it's so bad, that you can't cognitively form the words in English and you are swimming in the Matthew 27 moment. You and that thing that you have need you to show up, give thanks, and show joy. Congratulations means to, to be accompanied by a thing or a person and to give thanks and show joy. So therefore, give thanks or congratulations when you think or when you are actually the only one in pursuit of integrity. Congratulations or show joy when there is no one to be found that seems to be trustworthy. Oh congratulations or give thanks when you are the only one who seek impurity. Congratulations or give thanks when almost all of your members refuse to embrace accountability. Congratulations or give thanks when there's no other outside voice that can be found to help you to facilitate fairness. Those are the five ethics of becoming or being a pastor. Give thanks when it seems like life or the life rather is being sucked out of you. Or congratulations when it seems like the life is being sucked out of you and you still have to be a mother, still have to be a daughter, still have to be a pastor, still have to be a counselor, still have to be loving, still have to be compassionate, still have to be forgiving, and still have to be giving when there's nothing left to give. Congratulations. When I received the call to be on program to offer you a congratulations, I asked the bishop, what exactly do you want me to congratulate her in two? <laughs> so now that we've ruled out person, the question is, well, what is that thing? If the word congratulations means to be accompanied by a thing, to show up and give thanks, to show up with joy, but then what is that thing? Walter Hawkins asked the same question. He said, what is this? What is this? What is this? That I feel deep inside. What is this? My that keeps setting my soul on fire. What is this? That makes folks say I'm acting strange. What is this? That makes me want to run on in Jesus' name. What is this? When I want to do wrong, I can't do wrong. I end up doing right when I want to do wrong. And what is this? That when I'm down low, it gives me a song. If congratulations means to be accompanied by a thing and to show up and give joy and to what is this? Walter said whatever it is it won't let me. It makes me love my enemies. It makes me love my friends. It won't allow me to be ashamed. Romans 8 and 18 says it this. For I reckon yes. that the suffering of this present time are not 
worthy. Now listen, before you shout, let me explain this. It does not say worthy to be compared to. It says worthy to be compared with. The glory which shall be revealed in us. Now here's the difference between to and with. With means that the suffering has to be compared to a present glory. And you stand them up side by side and you compare them and one outweighs the other. But two means that the glory does not have to be revealed yet. It can still be on the inside and the suffering that's on the outside does not compare to what hasn't even shown up yet. The glory has not shown up yet. Congratulations. But the suffering is present today. Congratulations. And it doesn't matter what you're facing. Congratulations. You still have to show up and give thanks. Congratulations. Accompanied by that something that's on the inside of you that will not let you quit when you want to. Will not let you lay down when you want to. I mean the something that keeps you praying for people that won't pray back. That keep you giving to people that won't give back. They keep you loving on people that won't love back. Congratulations. 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 And when I tell you congratulations, what I'm giving you instructions to do is keep showing up. Keep showing joy. And keep giving thanks with that thing that's on the inside of you. You have assistant pastor, you have evangelized, you've worked, you're an awesome leader. But here's the one thing that I pray you will never compromise, and that is your time in his presence. Yes. There is a skill set to this. There is a skill set. We have uh, we have body memory. We, we can preach, we can hoop, we can holler, we can tap into the spirit. But there are a lot of us, the truth be told, are doing this drained. We are doing this empty. Yes. We are so tired of doing this that some of us are ready to quit. Right. But the reason why we're ready to quit is because we we think that activity equal intimacy. Yeah. 
just because you're busy, don't mean that you're busy on you. So don't confuse activity with intimacy. There's a time to say no, shut the door, spend time with him, pray without praying for a message, without interceding for the people, but saying, God, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, stand with the need of prayer. Because the most dangerous time for a leader is when they're tired and vulnerable. Because that's when sin creeps in. That's when secrets manifest. When we are anointed but not submitted to his presence. So here's my, here's my encouragement to you. People will be people. They, they will always have problems. They will always have issues. They will always be something else to do. But learn to use the word no. Go into the mountain. Be with him. And out of him. He will, he will release you to Apostello to preach and minister to God's people. And when you get through, you will have something for yourself and not give it all away. Don't be busy. Be intimate. God bless you, sis. No. 
voice of the Lord and know if God says go, so go. Amen. from the harbor at Troas, we made a straight run 
for Samathras. The next day we tied up at the new city and walked there to Philippi, the main city in that part of Macedonia, and even more importantly, a Roman colony. We lingered there several days. And on the Sabbath, we left the city and went down along the river where we had heard there was to be a prayer meeting. We took our place with the women who had gathered there and talked with them. One woman, Lydia, was from Tiberia uh -huh. and a dealer in expensive textiles, known to be a God-fearing woman as she listened with intensity to what was being said, the master gave her a trusting heart and she believed. After she was baptized, along with everyone in her household, she said in surge of hospitality, if you're confident that I'm in this with you and believe in the master truly, come home with me and be my guest. We hesitated, but she wouldn't take no for an answer. I read this scripture because Lydia was a woman of the community. And Pastor Polk, the community of Houston is expecting you to be a woman of God. They're expecting you to be a woman of hospitality. They're expecting you to be a woman of grace. And as this community stands, I charge you to never let down on your expectation of this local pastor. Every time you come into this house, every time you fellowship with her, every time you worship with her, expect great things from her. Expect God to do the unexpected, not only in her life, but in the church that she passes. I charge the community to pray for her. I charge the community to lock arms with her and help her win the God, win souls by the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I charge every pastor in here who's a part of this community, do whatever you can to support this young new pastor. She is a woman of God. She is a woman of influence. She is a woman of grace. And we believe that the call of God is on her life. Amen. I say to you, Pastor Pope, don't take no for an answer. Amen. Community, you've been charged in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to receive Overseer Pope as she comes. to all of the bishops, to all of our friends, to you, you, and you. 1 Peter 1, 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to the abundance of mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperable, undeniable, unfailing, reserved in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for our salvation, ready to be revealed in the end time. Evangelist Sherelle Polk, you have been carefully observed for many years and has been found faithful to be a faithful servant. You have served in many capacities in the ministry, a nurse, 
a drama, praise team member, and evangelist, youth pastor of the Tabernacle of Praise, yes. the associate pastor of the Rescue Church yes. in the city of St. Louis, yes. under the leadership of Pastor Ward. Amen. Now I give unto you, Pastor, the charge of pastorship for the Tabernacle of Praise in the city of Houston. I oversee a double pope give unto you among these witnesses on this day, May 30th, 2021. If you are willing to accept the charge, you may answer by saying, I will by the help of God. Will you commit to be faithful, to preach the word, the whole counsel of God, in every word, in season and out of season, without apology, without compromise, not shrinking to the cloud, the whole counsel of God, 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. I will with the help of God. Will you commit to lead the Tabernacle of Praise Church by being a personal example to this congregation, committed to a life of holiness, abstaining from the practice that may jeopardize your witness, and spending and uh, being time spent in the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, 1 Timothy 5 and 19. I will with the help of God. Will you commit to lead this congregation by being a personal gospel witness of your own life, Acts 20 and 20? I will with the help of God. Will you commit to know nothing among this congregation but Jesus Christ and him crucified? Not coming to them with persuasive word of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of the power that God may get all the glory. 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5. I will, with the help of God. Will you commit yourself to loving this congregation by praying fervently for those Christ has purchased with his own blood and has now given you the shepherd of this church, Acts 20 and 28. I will, with the help of God. Will you commit to love this congregation as a nurturing mother, cherish your own children, and pardon to them not only the gospel, but also your own life. 1 Thessalonians 7 and 8. I will, with the help of God. Will you commit to do everything in your power to shepherd this flock by protecting them from false teaching and false teachers. Titus 1 and 9. I will with the help of God. Will you commit to God in ruling your own home, teaching your own children and family the things of God according to the scripture, by the word and deed, and leading them to love God and his church. 1 Timothy 3, 4 and 5. I will with the help of God. Will you commit to be blameless? Huh, the wife of one husband. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, and faithful in all things. First Timothy 3 and 3. I will with the help of God. Woo! Will you commit to teach and preach the word of God to support the doctrine outlined in the bylaws of the original glorious church of God in Christ of the apostolic faith and will you continue to baptize in the name of Jesus. I will with the help of God. Woo! Glory to God. Ah. Woo! My God. Oh, that name of Jesus got me excited. Woo! Mm. Glory be to God. Ah, Pastor Sheriff Pope, take heed to yourself and to all the flock among which the Holy Ghost has made you pastor, which he purchased with his own blood. Acts 20, 27, and 28. Pastor Sherelle Quito Repo, shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseer, not by compulsive, not by constraint, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, not for money, but eagerly, not being Lord over God's people who God has entrusted to you, but being an example to the flock of God. First Peter 5, 2 and 3. And 
First Peter 1 and 16 say, Be holy, for I am holy. Amen. 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 Come on, let's clap our hands. All right, we're going to prepare now to bless this new pastor. I'm going to ask, amen, those who are pastoring, amen, if you would, to join us here surrounding the pastor. If you are pastoring a local church, if you would, to join us here surrounding the pastor. And we're going to vest and pray for her, amen. I'm going to ask, amen, women first, if you would, to help us assist as we vest her with uh, these garments that her local church has purchased for her. Amen. And um, Overseer Polk is going to pray. Amen. The prayer of installation. Pastors, if you would to come. If you pastor a church. Amen. Come on, women of God. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Men of God as well. further 
that what makes you great is your servanthood. This garment here, this one. that it goes by. Some people call it the Roche. Some reformations and denominations call it the surplus. For her office, we will refer to it as the surplus. It is a priest garment. It's the garment that reminds her that while she is a servant, she is also a priest in the Lord's church. This lace around it reminds her of the royalty of this office as being a priest. The whiteness of the garment reminds her that there is a holiness that comes with this office. And as she is a priest in the Lord's church, there are certain qualifications that she must meet. a purple cord with a silver cross purple denoting her office as a pastor she is not a part of the hierarchy of the church meaning she is not a bishop or an overseer but she is a pastor a senior pastor and so because she is a senior pastor she receives this purple cord which is threaded threefold. And she receives this silver cross, which is attached to the cord. This purple cord should remind you of your royalness. Because the Bible says we are part of the royal priesthood. God has chosen you for such a time as this. He set you apart before the foundations of the world. Before you were even a twinkle in the overseer's eye. He said, I formed you. I made you. I knew you. And I've chosen you for this moment in history. Overseer Pope has a Bible in her hand. She's going to present that to you. When God said no, give her the old. The one that she had slept with. Hallelujah. The one she had studied. The one that you know. Hallelujah. The one that have led you. The word, amen, that have fit you. He said, stay in the word. Stay with God. Hallelujah. Sleep with him. Stand on it. Trust it. Dream about it. Eat it. Eat it all. Eat the whole room. Amen. This Bible, you know it. Your Bible, you know. So you stay with your old Bible. But to walk in the old path. Stay with God and trust God and know He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Pastor, we're going to ask if you would to kneel. Take this. I'm going to ask pastors if they would to surround her. As we move forward in the official act of installation, we pour oil. We pour the oil of God on her head. The Lord says he anointed my head with oil. Overseer Pope, her pastor, her overseer, shall pray the prayer of installation. Lord, I know that he 
is that she may hear you clearly. I know my hand, God, that you can lay a hand on the sick and they shall recover. Oh God, I lay a hand on her finger. Hallelujah, that you would tread the path that she walk. Oh God.
give God one more praise anyway. Thank you. 
people with the document these types of transitions. She thought she thought good in her right mind to make a choice. Amen. And I praise God. That's enough. Amen. I don't want them to say I took away from all the preacher's time. Amen. Let's celebrate our preacher today. She's going to bless us. I wish you were. She's going to bless the house. And I'm going to bless your kind of steward. And just to all of, I, I, I can't get to call the names. There's just so many great men and women of God that are all in this sanctuary. Uh, you, you know if you're making an impact when you have people coming to support you and to, to show love. And um, I'm finding out, uh, Bishop, that the Honorable Bishop, Eddie Ferguson, who is the Assistant Presiding Bishop of the World Assembly of Restoration. You should have some profound people in the room. You have an Assistant Presiding, you have a jurisdictional Bishop, the Honorable Bishop Kirk Thompson, and, and his wife, and his wife, and his wife next to him. Flight and just leaving from the other side of town. 
And so it's it's gonna be a long only because I did not want to hear my friend mouth. Your name was Pastor Sherelle Johnson, I wouldn't be here. Praise God, your name is Pastor Pope today. Any other name? Any, I wouldn't Again, relationship causes us to stretch out yes, and go a little further. Uh, and I and, and I, I'm thankful. Listen, I want to do this, and I don't want to make giving painful. I I, I have been uh, uh, more blessed, Bishop Ferguson, in my life in, in than any other season of my life in a pandemic. Yes. I'm, I'm looking around and I, I said, Lord, I said before pre pre pandemic, I didn't see all this. I told Bishop Zach, I said, I said, what is, what's, I don't remember none of this. I just, have it been that long since I've been with you? Is that with, with Jesus? Has it been that long since I've been? You know, the old pastor was so good to me when she was, you know, the new pastor, I'm going to pray for her. Oh, uh, she was a blessing to me down through the years. And she kept me informed, but this new pastor just made quiet moves. I'm looking at that light sitting. I'm like, this looks good. This looks good. And, uh, uh, and so I, I want to I wanna be a blessing and, 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 uh, to our friend today. And I believe, I don't believe you would come today if you wasn't here to be a blessing to this woman of God. And so, um, I, I, I always ask the Lord, what, sh uh, what shall I give? And I, and I do converse with some of the leaders, ship, and I ask uh, one, what was the goal? I said the goal was too low. Amen. Too low. Too low. Uh, there's, there's too many of us in here that loves her. Amen. And because of that, we're going to be a blessing to her. We're going to write checks in her name. And she's going to, uh, she ain't giving this, this this money back to the church, I hope. Uh, I know I don't anymore, amen. <laughs> and these days, it's my day, you know. <laughs> what's mine is mine, and what's ties and offers is the church. <laughs> Pam, I told you today, I ain't paying no church notes. No church bill. God didn't set it up that way. Amen. You got the people. <laughs> People, you might check for me. You can best believe it ain't paying no bills to the church. Yeah. You know, up in the new car somewhere, I'm fool with me. Hey, Amen. Uh, <laughs> I'm sitting there, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for she, and she, Somebody say she needs a new car. Amen. Uh, amen. Let's give her a good down payment on something. If she don't, you know, amen. You, you know, you can, as a matter of fact, amen, we said down payment, but I've seen people put a payment on the car and God bless them with that car without another payment. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. I believe God, my brother just talked about it a few weeks ago. Amen. Fifteen thousand dollar truck that he bought for somebody else uh, that, that he thought he was bought for himself, and the Lord told him to give that truck away to somebody else. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, "Are you the one? Are you the one? Are you the one? I need a, I need a Houston vehicle. Are you the one? Are you the one?" Listen, I, I want to do this. I, I want to sow. I, I want to say, and, 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 and then God bless him. I got to finish it. God bless him with a truck after he didn't gave a $15,000 truck. God bless him or bless somebody to bless him with a truck, amen, debt free. Amen. The one he wanted. Somebody say, Lord, give her what she want. 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 Don't let her settle. Give her what she want. Amen. I, 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 I'm sorry, amen, I'm sorry twofold today. I'm sorry twofold today. I'm sorry, I'm sorry 200 uh, for my friend. And then I'm giving another 100 for her birthday, amen. Give another 100 for her birthday. Since she did, uh, she came to my birthday, so I, I feel like I, I feel like I need to sow another 100 uh, for, for her, for, for, for her. Just being there, being support, amen, amen. Uh, I'm gonna do that. Uh, real quickly, somebody uh, help me. I, I'm getting, I, I, it is not going to be my assignment to do the whole uh, full-fledged auctioneering. Amen. Uh, but I am going to take just a, another five minutes. Those that can sell that 200, stand with me real quickly. Thank you, Bishop Ferguson. Thank you, uh, Bishop uh, uh, Stewart. Thank you, uh, Bishop Kirk. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Zachary Davis. Amen. Was with him on last week. Amen. Bishop 
Amen. I'm, I, I, I started too low. Amen. Bishops is so at 500. Amen. 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 Pastor Williams. Amen. It's, it's standing with 200. Pastor McGowan is so at 200. I believe we already got y'all the, the goal that y'all said. That goal was way too long. I ain't gonna say who said the goal, I ain't gonna get, get in no trouble. But the, the, the goal was way too low. Amen. Uh, Pastor Connie, this is for you, just in case I have to. I, I, I want to bless the woman of God in advance. Uh, I know they're gonna do something, but I want to do it. do that just in case I, I'm not walking out out of disrespect. You know, it's just getting taking care of business with my wife. Amen. And uh that's that's for you. Amen. Amen. That's not I didn't want to put it in your hand because I didn't want to I didn't want you to add and make up the difference. I needed to be overflow. Amen. So I wanted to make sure you was taken care of just you been a blessing to me. You just don't know I I, I tune in every so often just when, when I can and you have been a blessing to me down through the years. And just wanted to sow into your life on today. Amen. Well, cash out. Tell, tell us that. Your cash, not the church. If it's, if it's that top cash out, I don't want it. We don't want it. Sherelle Pastor P. Dallas Sign, Sherelle Pastor P. Amen. If, if you're if you sowing. 200 from Calvary. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Amen. Uh, those that's under so 100, come real quickly. Come real quickly. Come, come real quick. Oh, you're adding that in. Okay. Amen. Thank you, uh, 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 Bishop Sean, uh, 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 Bishop Sean Davis, uh, Pastor Sean Davis. Amen. He says, stay low. Amen. That's my, I, I'm calling my spiritual father. Amen. He's, he's an awesome man. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Anybody else can saw 100? Real quick. Thank you. Is that, uh, Pastor? Amen. She's not happy with me. I start clapping loud. That's like the elder Tory bird. My stand elder Tory, you saw, so they can see who it is. Well, my assistant pastor for years, and I'm messing because he, she, he sold it. She just started clapping loud. I'm, I'm like, you know, this whole other conversation, I ain't gonna mess with it. I'm leaving the home, amen. I'm leaving the home, God prayed. She prayed that prayer, amen. Talked about the husband, the wife of the husband, or one of the wife of one of the husband, she said. She said it, and I heard her say it. And I, I, I heard you, I saw you quicken a little too when she said it too. Did you see it? <laughs> listen, listen, everybody else, everybody else, is, 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 anybody else that so that 100? I'm telling you, thanks quicken. You, you, you say certain things in church, they get that quicken in real quick. Everybody else, this is what I want you to do. I want you to just come. I want you to bring, move that to the side, come real quickly. Amen. Is that where we are? Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing. Everybody else, come real quickly. I'm not going to, I said I wasn't going to do go down, um, and I don't intend to do it. I want to get a base, and th this is a blessing. Come real quickly, real quickly, whatever you saw. Come on. Uh, the, the Reverend Larry Marlboro, come. So something today. Amen. Preachers see your soul, they invite you to preach. Amen. <laughs>
promise you, this is going to be a blessing. It's going to be a blessing. This is what I need to do. I, I need to do. I want to, I want to, uh, uh, 175 will put us over, over 3,000. And I think that is a blessing today. But that is a blessing. Amen. Uh, everybody that can, that have the ability to sort number 20, 20 dollars. Amen. Let's do it. Thank you real quickly. Thank you, Bishop. I'll come here. I'll come here. That's 20. Thank you, Bishop. That's 40. Amen. Let's thank God. This is Pastor Sherelle's grandmother. Stand up. Stand up so they can see you. Look, look how good this woman looks, y'all.
reminded me of one day I was driving down the road. I was at a stoplight and a young man came running by me, Bishop, running by the car. I mean, he running faster than Carl Lewis. And I'm like, what is going on? I didn't know if he had stole something. I didn't know if he had been robbed, but he had a backpack on his back and he was moving so swiftly. And the Lord said, watch him. And as I began to drive, I began to realize what he was running to. I looked up ahead and it was a bus stop. I looked behind me and the bus was coming. And the Lord says, many of my people have missed the bus. Because they were on the street that the bus ran on. But they weren't meant to stop. I used to run track. Mm. Used to run the 100 and the 200. Yeah. All these feet are made for moving. Y'all yeah. understand? Yeah. 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 And I began to think about this transition that's taking place now. And the Lord says, You ran the 100 and the 200, but don't forget the relay. Yeah. Yeah. The 4x1. Yeah. And the 4x2. Yeah. He said, yeah, don't forget that. He says, because what you're witnessing right now is the passing of the baton. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Oh, God. What we don't recognize and understand is that it's not just the four best runners running. Right. See, we think the coach picks just the four best. No, but the placement of the four is very significant. It's not enough that you can run, but you got to run in play. So that's the first lead. There's a second lane. Yeah, yeah. There's a third lane. Yeah. And then there's a fourth lane. Yeah. Oh, God, but what we don't understand is that the first leg is the strong one. Yeah. Yes, it is. Oh, God. The reliable one. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they got faith to start. Yeah. Oh, oh, God, it's a whole bunch of us got faith to start. We just don't have faith to finish. Yeah. But the first one is strong because they're reliable. But then there's number two and number three. They're your best runners. Because some of us know how to start and others know how to get ahead. the one that is tough and determined because they got to make up the gap between number one, number two, and number three. Oh God, I don't know what place you in, but I'm trying to tell you it does not matter. The real situation is that you got to know how to catch when I look. Y'all don't understand. The anointing is not in the run, the anointing is in the release. Set, go, they take off running. Right. Number two gets the privilege and honor to watch number one. Yeah, that's, right. That's, right. that's right, that's right, that's right. But while they're watching number one, then they got to focus forward and begin to move like they number one. I can't even, I can't even just jog out. I got to take off running and trust the fact that the release will take place. I got to put my hand back. Anyway, yeah. oh God, 
and, 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 and so I, but I, what I realized is that God was trying to prepare us for something. He was trying to get us in place. He was trying to make sure that we were ready for what he was getting ready to do next. Uh, sometimes God has to prepare you for what he's prepared for you. I say he got to prepare you for what has been prepared for you already. There are some things that you think you're waiting on and the truth is they're waiting on you. Many of us are in an hour now that he is transitioning us and shifting us to the place that the church can be the church. This is the season that the believer has to believe again. We had a Pentecost Sunday, man of God, that was so powerful that the folk are still experiencing Pentecost. Oh my God, some people are so religious that they don't have relationship. And this is the hour that we got to switch. We got to make sure, honey, I've learned how to have church dressed from the waist up. Thank <laughs> you. 
until the day of Jesus Christ. He's the only one that I know starts and finish. I know yeah. you start a whole bunch of stuff yeah. and you don't finish. You, you, yeah, yeah, you said you was gonna clean your closet, you ain't finished. You said you was gonna paint the room, you didn't finish. Huh? You said you was gonna rearrange the furniture, you didn't finish. Huh? You said you was gonna write the book, you didn't finish. Huh? But he said, I'm not like man. Huh? If I start it, I'ma finish it. Huh? If I put my hands on you, huh? I'ma keep my hands on you. Huh? Till I finish what I said I would. Huh? And that's what the relay race does not understand. Huh? started it, but as long as it get finished, we all get a trophy. We all get a medal. Oh God, can I tell you that you got to be in it to win it? That we do it better together. Every now and then, God will send somebody that'll help you along the way. Lord, I'm running, trying to make a hundred, ninety-nine and a half won't do. You've got to recognize and they can't leave if they want to because they still will have to testify 
reminder of how God has been good to you. <laughs> God. Yes, I set the trap and God did it anyway. Yes, I scandalized, but God called to the leader. Yes, I died, Lord, and the Lord called to the breakthrough. Yes, I was the one running my big mouth, but God put a muzzle on my mouth. I was the one that was against the vision, but God blinded my eyes. Help us! He says, He let me go. He says, I need to encourage you because I need you to know you didn't start it overseer, didn't start it, he started it. Yeah. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Yeah. He let me go. Yeah. A good work. Yeah. Good work. Oh, God, the Message Bible shifts it and says a great work. Yeah. It went from good to great. Yeah. Yeah. There's some things in your life getting ready to go from good to great just like that. I understand that saltine crackers were good until you got a rinse. Woman of God was the child care millionaire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said, no, no, no. He says, because I need you to change your conversation, I got to change your circle. Some of us are where we are because of who we are around. has to change so my mind can change so my feet can move. Uh, faith has feet. I know if you believe because you start to run it. Rebecca says write the vision, make it plain so they that read can run. I, as a pastor, as a senior leader, I don't have to ask you if you call vision. I don't know because you'll be running with it. Because I'd already told them, I said, I need a maid. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking. Right, right. I need a maid. Just put it in the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes you gotta throw it out there. See if they're gonna <laughs> you know, it's amazing what the mind does. I put a picture of my Range Rover that I'm about to get, and all of a sudden, every every road I rode on, yeah, one was in front of me, one was behind me. Okay, 
Well, I'm going to really test and see if you want it. I said, because the car is moving and so is ours. So we can't stop because vision is on wheels. Vision is rolling. I said, we can't stop in the middle of the highway, but I need you to get 713. I need you to get 455. And I got made. Ah, oh, God, you got to have somebody that knows how to catch vision. You got to have somebody that knows how to see vision. You got to have somebody that's a vision interpreter. You got to have somebody that won't take no for an answer. You got to have somebody that will be your advocate. You got to have somebody that'll go to back for you. You got to have somebody that'll go to God for you. You don't need another shopping bike. Get ready to do something supernatural. 
Come on, clap your hands for this woman. Wow. If you receive something from this on time anointed yes. word from yes. the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Listen, let's sow a seed in that I know you've given. And then I'm going to ask one of the ushers if they would come. We're going to sow a seed. Amen. One thing I have learned. Not only as a pastor, but one thing that I've learned as a man. You ever want to go to a next level in your life, you got to learn how to sow. You got to learn how to sow. And so I'm going to ask a man you to grab a seed. Amen. And I want you to come and sow into this woman of God. Bishop Stewart, what's your cash app? Do you have a cash app? I am Dr. I am Dr. Connie. I am Dr. Connie, amen. I'm going to sow via Cash App, amen, from the Calvary Fellowship Church and myself, amen, from Cincinnati, amen. I want you to sow a seed. Listen, when you receive a word like that, a rhema word like that, amen, you got to learn how to sow, amen. You have to stretch your faith, amen. Hallelujah. I want you to sow a seed. If you're going to sow tangibly, uh, with a seed, and then I want you to come and sow right here. Pastor David is here standing, amen. Those who are going to sow in a tangible way, amen. If you're making a check out, amen, I want you to make it out to Dr. Connie Stewart, amen. Hallelujah. Bless you, woman of God. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. I'm sowing via cash app right now. Thank you so much. Bless you. Bless you, Pastor McGowan. Thank you. now for this opportunity to sow into this magnanimous gift. The person who, Bishop Connie Stewart, thank you, Lord, for the anointing that is on her life. And Lord, we thank you now for this time of seed of sowing. The Father, we sow our seed with intentionality, knowing, Lord, that you shall restore unto us one hundredfold. But this seed that we have sown, Lord, use it, Father, to take your woman of God to the places that you have called for her to go. Thank you, Lord, for this anointing, the vastness of it, the depth. We pray now, Lord, that you will continue to let her down in the depths of your word that she might speak as an oracle across this globe. Lord, we thank you for her ministry, her church, her business, and the different exploits that she shall do in her name. And as we sow this seed, we partner with her in kingdom ministry, vision, and mission. We do it now. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. And every believer in this house, clap your hands and say amen. Thank you so much for your liberality and giving. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Overseer Polk if she were to come for our last portion of the service. No, you come. Come. No, not yet. I want you to come. Hallelujah. Vacation and all that wonderful stuff. Um, when you're not, when you're not the senior pastor no more, you're just the overseer. You know, you come as you need to be, amen. <laughs> when she, when she takes, she said, <laughs> she said, "That's what I've been doing." <laughs> She gets ready to go on the plane. She always makes this post on Facebook. Southwest, get my flight ready. <laughs> All right, well, uh, listen. Um, we have here two certificates of installation, and uh, we have four signatures on here. 
uh, one for myself as the Bishop of Protocol, one for my guest preacher, Bishop Connie Stewart, and then of course one from Bishop E.L. Usher, who could not be here today. I would ask as the overseer, if you would, to sign both certificates and we'll present them to her. I want you to use this one here. I want you to sign with blue on this one. Right here. Yes, ma'am. supposed to be this year. Desolation service was supposed to be last year in May, but because of the pandemic, God blocked it. I believe it was definitely God that stopped it, and it was supposed to be on this time of this year. So to God be the glory for that. It just so happened that the day fell on the birthday, and we decided to move forward. But I truly thank God for being in this place on today. I think the last few months have been very difficult. Very difficult. I was tested on every tried, on every sign, and as I began to prepare myself for this portion of the service, I remember sitting in a class for about four hours with an instructor telling me that a woman should preach. I remember a very close friend that called me and told me, been knowing them for years, almost 18, 20 years, and told me that you need to stop doing your thing and come and do mine. I sit there and listen, not get upset, not get an attitude, not 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 question his authority and not question it, but I truly thank God that I begin to pray because coming from a friend, I expected him to at least respect my position. I said, Amen. Then I got another strange call, and this particular individual didn't even know him. He told me, You're out of order, and I'm gonna come and help you get in order. Wow. I didn't get upset, I didn't get mad, I didn't have a fit, I just declined and 
blocked them and went on with my life. But because of the anointing that was on me, I did buckle. I grabbed my tears and I wiped them. I sat in that class and I asked God, God, why am I here? And he told me. He said, you get the beat and spit out the bones and you sit there and you take it all in. But today, I stand here after being tested and after being tried. After wanting to I was even younger and we was almost in a car accident when a bus tried to come and hit the uh, passenger door. I can recall being at a very, very young age decided and wanted to quit, uh, commit suicide. I remember having to go through trying to be out there in the world but knowing that there was a difference in my life. So I stand here today knowing that this is not something that I ran for, it's not something that I acquired, it's not something my mama just passed down. But let me I seen the vision. I was there when the church first opened. I remember being in the small, in the in the hallway of the ministry. And as I was, God has increased us and caused us to go through. So now that I wanted to start off with my children, but I want to, I want you to know that I honor you. Y'all, let me share just a damn, because I gotta be transparent. Y'all know I'm not the realest you ever find. When I came here, Bishop, week was not easy. It was not easy. And I think many may not know because we put on a nice show, but it was not easy. But I had to go to my mother. I had to go to my pastor. I had to go to my overseer. And I had to repent. Oh, the church don't like that word, but I had to go and I had to apologize. Because I came in too strong. She really wasn't ready. And I had to submit and I had to let her get her time in and let her get her feel. Because when I painted the wall, she was like, I can paint that color. But every time I tried, we was, we was back and forth. But I had to submit and I had to let her know and God had to come and tell me. He said that in one service, he said, but you may be anointed, but there's some doors that she already got open that you ain't even got to worry about fighting in through. I'm a heavy young minister. I had to come and I had to get right and I had to taste my words and chew them and pray about it and say, God, you deal with it and I'm going to step back. We had to really work through that. It was not always easy. It was not easy, but God has brought us to this place. That not only and we hear and we shout it, but she has really made in her mind and has passed, passed this baton. And I am truly, truly grateful for where we are right now. Not every day is easy. Amen. But God be the glory that she has entrusted me, that my life is an example that she knows. Amen. She knows that I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. So I honor you today, Overseer. I love you. And I'm so grateful that God allowed the opportunity that I don't have to take it while you come, but I'm able to sit at your feet. That I'm able to sit and clean. I'm able to eat at your table. I'm able to sit there. Some I take in and I give in and I take it and I run. And some of that stuff, we be like, all right, mama. Amen. But I love you. I love you. I love you. My time is up. But to my children, I dare not step forward. I dare not step. To my oldest, Dawson A. Would you please stand? To Quan, our name, Coons. Would you please stand? To Quan Coons, please stand. And to my little bonus, my little bonus, baby. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that they are the ones. When we moved, Bishop, we didn't know what we was coming to do. And we loved a wonderful place. We loved a wonderful church. We loved some wonderful people. And my kids came and we sacrificed. And I'm not going to act like they, every day they want to be up here in Bible study. I'm not going to act like they want to come up here and set these cameras. I'm not going to act like these kids want to get up here and sing for praise and worship. But to come and be the Lord. Take it and 
our children, I want to tell you thank you so much for being on this journey, for coming in, and I am not the easiest person to work with, so for coming in to uplifting and supporting, I thank you all the, I'm going to be truthful, I'm about as real as a kid, I'm not, I want it done a certain way when I want it done and all that kind of stuff, but I want you to know that this day to me, I really could not do it without your help, without your support. So I love you from the bottom of my heart. Now you all get me seated. And this is it. I'm done. I know I got so many people I'm not going to change. But you know, these are some people that are in my life. And they shocked me so good. They shocked me so good. They came all the way from St. Louis, Missouri. Called me on the phone. They were trying to pop up in my heart. But they came all the way from St. Louis, Missouri. Nanny Ringo's. Y'all stand on up all the way. These are some of my shop members. You all, they prayed for me. Prayed me through. Supported. Loved me. I mean, they when I was in St. Louis, they mama fixed me biscuits and fixed all kind of dinners. They took me in because they knew my family was on the other side of town. So they really made me feel like I was a part of their family. They opened their mother's doors and just took me right on to me and my kids. You know, you got some people that love the past, but I don't care for them kids. But they took me and my children as they were own nieces and nephews. So today, I want to say thank you. And I know my best friend is watching. I know she is crying because she could not be here. But I want her to know that you've supported me throughout the years, and I love you. And your presence today does not stop my love from you. I know that if you could, you would have been here. But I want you to know, Rainey Spanks, I love you. And to all of my special guests, to my sister, to my grandmother, to Sister V, my Aunt B, amen. I want you all to know that I love you from the love of God. I know this journey is not going to be easy. My life has never been easy, so I don't expect nothing less. But one thing I do today... I stand with some confidence. Oh, I stand with an assurance. I stand with some praise. Because I know that if God brought me here, He's the same God. And I'm closing, I'm closing right here on this, but I will be crazy if I did tell you that my God will not leave me. I tell you every Sunday, I tell you every Sunday.
Amen. I want to thank you for taking care of our pastor. Thank you. I just want to thank you for taking time. They stayed all last night. The youth, amen, was working, getting the decoration, everything done for our leader. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, for the birthday, I want to thank Pastor David. Yeah. Wait, no, no, no. Let me thank her. Amen. Sister Trisha. Where's Sister Trisha? Wave your hand. Where is she? She might have stepped out. She took care of Friday night. Y'all not. And, and I clapped so hard when they said it's hard work with the pastor. She wanted to be out on the water in a white, in white on the ship on the water. Doing her birthday. She kept saying, I'm turning 40, so I need to have a white party out on the water. Amen. So we know we had to do it great. We had to do it big and great. So I want to thank Sister Trisha, Sister Robin for Friday night. We had a good time. Got caught in the rain, got caught out in the rain. Then on last night, Pastor Dean. Come on, Tabernacle Breaks. Come on and thank God. Amen. We went in white, but we walked out on the ship. Amen. On the water. Celebrating our pastor. Amen. And it's not over. It won't be over until tonight. We got one more big surprise on tonight. So if anybody want to go with us tonight, just call me, text me, inbox me, let me know. We're running late, so that's why we got to get out of here because we got reservation. So we just thank God. We love your pastor. Amen. Just thank God, amen, for this day and for being alive just to see it. Praise God to witness because my mind goes back to some that they got the mantle, but the overseer, the leader was gone. So I just thank God. And I know God is going to do great things. He's already, she already pushed me out on Facebook. I didn't want to look looking in my face. I didn't want to do all of that. I didn't mind standing up here at church preaching. But to get on Facebook and everybody looking at me in my face and I don't know what you're doing, what you're looking at, I don't know how you see me. She kept pushing me to get on Facebook. So. <laughs> now she can't stop me. She said, now mama, you're going too long. <laughs> see, that's what happened when you put a preacher out there, amen. <laughs> Now she's going to have to stop me, but I just thank God. I thank God for Brother Mims, amen, amen. working. He comes and helps us so much, and I want to thank him. Let us all stand. I think we're about done. My mother, my mother, thank yeah. God for Mother Anna, the queen of my home. Queen. Amen. Look at us all stand. When you look at me, I'm an only child. My mom only had me. And now we look, we got a whole generation. We got to try it. Amen. We got together last week for a graduation. It was so many of us. We got five generations, but it was so many of us now. Praise God. So I just thank God for the queen of the family. I thank God for each of you that came. I believe she's happy. I believe she's pleased. Amen. And God get all of the glory. God get all of the praise. Pastor Latanya. God bless you. Pastor, all my good friends, Pastor Reynolds, Pastor Sander, I just love your ladies. And I want y'all to know, I pray for women pastors. Because I think back when it was hard for women leaders. They talked about them so bad, but we got some that held on. And I thank God for my bishop. My bishop is a woman, and so I thank God for Bishop Schaefer. I praise God. How the women tread the way of the state that they quit. Because they knew that God called them. Man did not call us. You got to know that God has called and ordained you and equipped you. Amen. If anybody want to go and be with us tonight, please call me. Let me know. Text me. We need about 25. We want to have a good party. 2025, the motor Mary. Praise God. Lord God, we just thank you. All we can say, God. It's thank you, God, for everything that has taken place. God, we pray that you get all the glory, God. We just bless your name. Thank you for everyone that came from far and near. We thank you, God, for raining out on us, for pouring out your glory upon us. We thank you for the preach word, God, that came to build us up. We thank you how you encouraged us through the word. Lord, and we thank you for the new elect leader, God, how you, God, chose her, picked her up out of their body, and God, you picked her up off the pew. Lord, if you put your word down in a God, help her to run and not get weary. Help her to walk and not faint, God. Bless these that are on their way home, God. These that are traveling over the highways, God. When they get home, let everything be decent and in order. These that are going back over the airway, you hold that plane in the palm of your hand. Lord God, don't let it rock and don't let it tear. Lord God, and we're going to bless your name, God. We give you all of the praise. Lord, I pray that this 
Jesus' name. Amen. 